Shauna. Hello. All right, so gentle reminder of a few things. So I'm Sukruta, I'm CTO of Girl Geek X. We're recording these videos. They'll be available for you in a week. Post your um, your viewing party, selfies of you watching this, and any other learnings that you have um, on social media with the hashtag GGX Elevate. We're going to do a QA and a at the end if we have the time. So use the, quest, uh, use the Q&A button at the bottom to ask questions. If we don't have time, we'll answer the questions um, at a later, later tomorrow or later this week. Um, so please check out our job board on girlgeek.io slash opportunities. Um, yeah, that's it. So let's enjoy Shauna's talk. Shauna, Senior Vice President of Product Management at Zendesk, before which she was the Chief Product Officer at Planet. Prior to that, she spent 14 years at Salesforce, going from the first localization manager to growing into being the uh, Senior Vice President of Platform Product. So that was a great uh, growth. And Shauna is going to be talking to us today about her growth from office manager to CPO in over a thousand steps. Thank you, Shauna, for making time for us. I'm super excited. Thank you. Awesome. I will uh, just jump in since we're running a little late on time. Welcome, everyone. I hope you're having a great day uh, here. Thank you so much to the Girl Geek X crew uh, for hosting today. I'm really honored to be here. And as uh, Sukritha mentioned, uh, I have had quite a career. Um, not always the one I planned. It's been an interesting odyssey, and I thought uh, I would share a little of that with you. And really, this is the only good place to start because so much of uh, my career really does come down to this. I think there is some myth out here that we can all, uh, you know, we're self-made, we worked hard, every accomplishment we have uh, came, just sprung forth from our amazing intellect and crazy persistence. And, and I don't want to discount that, but, uh, you know, the universe is large and we are all very, very lucky to have been born in this uh, place in time. And uh, so many people have helped me along the way and I'm incredibly grateful to them. But really, uh, when I think about career plans, we just heard a little um, from the, the crew of Grand Rounds about uh, planning. And <laughs> so much of life is really uh, a fantastic, stochastic kind of adventure. And um, we can't always uh, get all of the steps right for how we want to get there. But at the end, you know, there's some really great, great goals and great um, milestones that we get there. So, um, you know, uh, in my lifetime, we had an entire industry come and go. We had entire things, uh, you know, dot com dissolution number one. We had uh, a grand financial crisis. Um, entire industries are gone. So we really uh, have to think about agility. We do it a lot in terms of how we do our work, but I think we sometimes um, get a little locked in and forget um, that we wouldn't make a solid, uh, you know, waterfall five-year plan to do anything else in our lives. And being agile in our careers is really um, critical. Um, and there's no one uh, right way to go. And, and sometimes, you know, things change. I spent the first 20 years of my life uh, assuming I was going to be a physician. Uh, it turns out my university transcript and I had very, very different ideas <clears throat> about that future. And, and, you know, there was no product management Barbie set as <laughs> when I was uh, a kid and coming out um, of of school with my fantastic degree in Russian studies and political science didn't set me up for anything really obvious. And it took um, quite a bit of experimentation uh, and curiosity. And I think that early curiosity is what has also kind of driven a whole bunch of my career, a strong desire to learn new things and an absolute hatred of being bored uh, has been probably the two biggest things uh, that have driven my career to date. And I think we think a lot about, um, you know, driving our careers. We hear about this all the time, right? What are you doing to drive your career? What are the activities 
um, that you're doing. I think we get a little lost sometimes and, and lose the journey. Uh, I like car racing, maybe you don't, but this I thought was a really amazing analogy, right? There is a fantastic race that goes from Paris to Dakar in Africa, and you have this amazing adventure, and uh, you, you have a whole crew that comes with you because you assume your car will break down um, and you will go the wrong way and it will take much longer than you anticipated and it's glorious and the sort of alternative is this um, you know ring of never-ending struggle uh, and I think when you think about your career and, and how you progress through it um, kind of a, an adventure attitude and a um, fantastic kind of see what will happen is a great way to approach things and make sure that you're not uh, missing out on the amazing experiences that come sort of between those promotions. I think we sometimes put milestones in the ground about where we're supposed to be at certain points in our lives. Um, and when we don't get there, we can be really disappointed. And um, I, I always think that's really unfortunate because there is so much to learn uh, along the way on these journeys. Um, my career was clearly not a straight line. Um, I, uh, I did start out uh, as a localization project manager. You can see I, I did that job three times in my career, sort of moving on from it, finding myself in a position uh, where it was skills I needed to rely on to kind of go back into uh, the job market when things had changed. Uh, I certainly didn't expect uh, to learn much that would help me in my career, uh, taking that nine month apprenticeship as a handbag uh, manufacturer with an Hermes train designer. But my goodness, did I learn a tremendous amount about uh, human nature, about uh, satisfying the wants and needs of customers in a way that uh, I don't think any other technology job would have given me. And you know, um, it was a tremendously long time between that first localization manager job and, and that SVP of product management job. I spent 14 years in the same job, or not in the same job, but with the same company at Salesforce. And I think it's another thing we think a lot about is, have I stayed too long? Have I stayed long enough? And I think that a lot of those thoughts are silly. If like uh, the previous speakers were saying, if you find the thing um, that matters and that gives um, meaning for you, then you keep going. And that's what gets you up in the morning. I like to tell people that product management is a job that by all measures is pretty terrible, right? If everything has gone swimmingly well, you've reflected that back out on uh, your developers, your sales engineers, your sales team, your marketing team. And if it goes absolutely sideways and uh, the organization uh, is in <laughs> at a loss, you stand up in front of the room uh, and it's all you. But what I found is that there was this fire in, in my gut that was about helping customers help their customers. And I couldn't, uh, I couldn't imagine doing anything else. And I think that that love of my customers and that sort of obsession uh, with with happy, with helping them is the other sort of huge part that drove my success. And then I think this is a big thing that we don't uh, talk a lot about, and that's that you know what we do. We talk about it a lot. Who am I kidding? But uh, having it all is a lot, right? You can have a family and children and a job, and it's not easy, but I think a lot of the things that we tell ourselves and a lot of the things that the media tells us about what it's like uh, to be a working mother uh, are really bananas. Uh, there is this myth that we're going to go out on maternity leave and we're going to come back and we're going to be distracted and we won't be as good as we were. And there is this amazingly strong body of scientific research that's happening about what happens when not just women, but men and women come back uh, from parental leave or after the, the birth of their children. Uh, Amy uh, Henderson, who is uh, the founder of a company called Tend Lab that really focuses a lot on uh, sort of parenting in the workplace, 
has done this amazing research and the women primarily that she, that she spoke with, the senior women, all with hindsight were able to look back and find an acceleration in their careers uh, post childbearing. And I think, you know, whether you have children or not is a totally personal choice. And, but I want uh, everyone to know that it's, it's not, I think, the horrible, awful career ending thing that we've thought it was for the longest time. And there is a fantastic thing that can happen that uh, that little J curve was definitively uh, after my daughter uh, was born. And at 12, uh, we're having a fantastic time together um, in a way that allows me to be here and also there and to be a fantastic role model for her about what it looks like uh, to be a woman who is in the workforce. And this one is important to me. Uh, it's success is not uh, a pie, right? I think oftentimes we think for us to win or to get a promotion or to get ahead, uh, someone else has to lose. Um, and it's not like there is this finite amount of success where we get our piece of, of the pie uh, and we eat it and then they're all gone, right? It is really more of this sort of random uh, infiniteness that is more pie than pie. And um, so much of how I got to where I am is about the people who put a hand out to me and who supported me in my career. You, you heard from Layla and Jen earlier, um, a huge part of my network of support in my career. And it's incredibly important, I think, for us to think about how we uh, turn around and put our hands up to for the next group of women coming up in the world. Uh, so yeah, that's sort of my my journey through my career. I think I went a little fast. I woke up this morning with a cold and I'm on a little cold medicine, so maybe going a little fast today, but it might leave us um, with a little more time for a Q&A. All right, Shauna. That was amazing. My video feed is taking a little bit of time. Hi. You're Hi. so awesome. I love the fact that you said that success doesn't need to be shared for sure. Sometimes we're a little bit hard on each other, right? Mm -hmm. We get a little competitive and we don't help each other out enough. Um, what has been, I guess, for you, I have a question. <laughs> um, what has been for you the most fun role that you had while you transitioned over, over the years? Uh, I think almost every job I've had has I've found the fun, but I think um, I find fun. Uh, I have a kind of warped sense of fun. Things that are really really hard are mm -hmm. fun. So uh, at Salesforce, we had a giant project to rewrite the entire front end of a mm -hmm. seventeen-year-old software product, yeah. and it was uh, an entire company motion took me way out of my comfort zone. And for, uh, uh, it was a bit of so hard, but at the end it was just so fantastically um, rewarding. And I got, the fun part was really uh, so much about the people and conscripting a, a sort of unwilling team onto Team Lightning and then going out in the world and talking to customers about it. Yeah. So there's another question. What is a mistake you made in your journey that you could share with us? Hmm. I think one of the mistakes I made was, um, was thinking that I could uh, go fast. Like I got, there were times in my career I got a little ahead of my skis where I saw other people getting promoted. I let my ego get in the way and um, you know, when I didn't get a promotion, I, I asked for, you know, I, I took it really personally. I was devastated. And in hindsight, um, I've realized, you know, that extra year I spent in the job before I promoted was important. And I learned a lot. Um, and I wasn't ready when those things had happened. So I think, um, yeah, getting a little too, uh, attached to my own ego and letting some of that go yeah it happens to all of us i bet um okay we have another question that says 
how did you get the opportunity to be a handbag apprentice for mes <laughs> does one find it is an opportunity is like that shana <laughs> strange things happen when you take city college classes for fun and you meet interesting people and uh when you've been laid off and you have a little bit of uh severance you can say yes to some things that you normally wouldn't say yes to i think i probably would have stayed longer but my husband started sort of like you know it's it might be time shot at this little adventure you're on <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think uh kept you going when things were not going the way you meant for them to go? Like how do you keep yourself positive? I mean I think um for me it's about um for, what's always been important to me and what I found when I became a product manager and why I've never wanted to do any other job since I started um is that connection to customers and knowing that even when things are really hard um or things aren't going great in the office that the things that I do have impact on real human beings and I was lucky enough uh over the course of my career to really get to know uh, you know I I count a number of former customers as friends today and and getting to know how the things I did uh impacted the their lives and um and that really is the thing that keeps me going i all right so some more questions pouring in while i'm reading them out so what is the biggest leap mentally and leadership wise you think uh, you experienced in moving from director to vp to svp to c level yeah i mean i think um one of the craziest things is about i mean it's funny i talk about this a lot uh and i noticed it the most when i became a uh, svp and that's moving from what i called the person who was sort of i was i had this brand of being the person who fought the man right i was speaking up for the customer and i was really adamant and i was pounding the table and sort of um advocating really hard often against uh management and then i became the man <laughs> and it was a really interesting adjustment for me to understand that often uh there is a toll in this sort of i disagree but i'm going to commit and go forward um that's really required at an executive level and that adjustment um was probably the most interesting of my career wow all right maybe um last few questions um i'm curious because a little buddy told me you were best known for getting the customers to fall in love with you what is your secret oh uh you know listening um i think a lot of it was really active listening and then um here's a strange thing i told them no uh and i think sometimes we try to please customers or bosses or colleagues and we say oh yes all the time and then we either can't deliver or can't deliver in a timeline or 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 people make plans based on that yes and sometimes a really really clear i'm not going to be able to do that is so much more powerful than um are sometimes like extreme anxiety about wanting to be able to say yes that's amazing i'm i'm didn't think of that at all um just one last question and then we should wrap um what was a pivotal moment that helped you help propel you into senior management roles yeah i mean i think a lot of what i uh did to get propelled into senior management was taking on projects that no one else wanted to do mm-hmm. uh, i've had the good fortune i don't know to work in really fast growing companies where there was always more work on the ground than uh there were people to do it and finding out which one of those things was actually really important and then taking ownership of it and and learning that i you know, showing management that i was the kind of person who who could take on those hard things um was a huge part of my career growth 
Thank you, Shana. This brings us to the end of your talk. Thank you, everyone who posted questions and the amazing comments. By the way, you got a lot of love for your glasses. Huh? <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> Thank you again. Thanks, everyone. Have a good rest of your day. Thank you, too. Bye.